Hey what's up you guys, it's Nicholas Lionrider and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how to create your own custom textures for the brand new gift shop prop pack. So if you saw my last video you may have seen that I created the gift shop prop pack in anticipation for Axie's release. And to showcase the gift shop prop pack I thought it would only be appropriate that I actually show you how to use the pack. So the gift shop prop pack is a way for you to add a lot of different customization and creativity to your zoos that you otherwise couldn't with the base game. So you can make custom things like balloons and hats and shirts all from scratch with your own custom designs to make your zoos really unique. So I thought I'd start off today's video by actually going over in detail each of the props that are going to be in the initial release of the pack and in the future other packs are going to be released with new items that are going to be using the exact same setup that I'm showing off in today's video. So without further ado, from left to right, I want to go over all of the props in the base pack. So we have from left to right, the children's book, the adult novel, the baseball cap, the balloon, the flag, shirts of different sizes. We have adult and kid sizes of a sweatshirt, t-shirt, and a folded shirt. We have a lunchbox, two magnets. We have a square and a uh, like rectangle. We have a mug, a Christmas ornament, a phone case, a toy box, an umbrella, and a gift bag. And so, as you can see, there's a lot of different options that would allow you to make different props for your gift shops. So, you might be wondering, where do we get started? So, the first thing that you're going to do is kind of realize, well, how do these work? So, if you look at the in-game facilities with the existing billboards, like screens and stuff, you can see that each screen usually had a template that would allow you to see what the display would be appropriately. So you might see something like, as an example, they might have one of the templates that was like this square template that said it needs to be 1024 by 1024 for this size display. Now, while this is really useful for flat images like the ones that are in the base game, obviously three-dimensional objects like shirts and stuff can't really work the same way. So I devised a, a plan and a template for you to make kind of whatever you would want with the most amount of creative freedom still attached while trying to be as easy as possible to use. So how do I actually use it? So to get this template, you would actually find it directly on the Nexus page that you downloaded the gift shop pack from. So you might see right here, you have the gift shop pack homepage the billboards, and then this image. So this image is actually going to be the template that we're going to need to download to see how to create custom textures. So if you just hit download in the upper right hand corner, you'll get this image. And it's a bunch of different colored squares with a bunch of different labels on them, like base pattern and logo and stuff. And it all might seem a bit daunting at first, but I'm gonna show you how it could be used and how easy it is to actually make textures using it. So if you download this, save it and save it directly to your Planet Zoo user media billboards folder. So the folder where all of your billboards are going to go. You can then load in game and essentially to see what this template looks like on our objects, all we gotta do is go in game, click on one of our objects like our shirt. We go to the custom media folder, refresh it. And then if we scroll down to find where it's actually located, you can see here it is, new billboard template and we hit okay you can see that it applied the template on one of our objects. So as you can see, it displays all of the different like squares essentially with their color coordinated areas to allow you to see what areas would be affected by your texture once you start editing. So I've actually taken the liberty of adding this texture to every single part, like prop in the original version of this pack. And as you can see, each one has roughly the same kind of format. So the logo is always going to be the front and center thing that's going to be the main image that you're going to want to edit. And that's always going to be the one that is directly in the center of your image. And that's why it's a little bit bigger just to give you a little bit more texture detail. But other areas like, you know, some of the sides of sleeves or the back sides of hats and stuff are all going to use different textures depending. So I've designed it in a way that you would be able to make essentially one texture if you want. As an example, let's grab this t-shirt and let's apply this custom Lion Rider merch texture that I already created. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. It looks like a custom shirt, exactly like what we want. But I've also designed it so that from this same texture, 
you can make a bunch of different things. You can make a sweatshirt, you could make a lunchbox, you could make a balloon, and they would all use the same texture without changing a single thing. And this was intentional. So this way you can make a bunch of different objects without any hassle at all, as long as it's pretty basic. Now, this is an example of, you know, the most generic type of texture that's basically just a logo with a couple of color swaps. But for some objects, specifically something like the toy box, this toy box has six individual texture planes that you would need to have custom textures for. So as an example, a, an example of what the toy box might look like, I've actually generated as well. So if we scroll down, I have this template that's called Toy Lion. And as you can see, each side of the box is a different texture. We have a top texture that says wildlife. We have the front image with the toy on it. The back has like a barcode. And this was all to make it so that you have some real creativity with everything that you create with this pack. So let's start by making our very own first texture. So the first thing that we're gonna do is decide what kind of prop we wanna use. So I think in this particular example, I wanna use a t-shirt. So we'll just copy a t-shirt really quickly and we're gonna apply that new texture again. So if we just scroll up again and find where it says new billboard texture, we can see how it looks on the t-shirt. So let's start by creating our first texture. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up a photo editing program, whether that be Photoshop or GIMP or paint.net, whatever you wanna use, anything would work. And we're just gonna basically grab the template that we already have and start working on our actual prop. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is define the base color that we wanna do. So in this particular case, the base color is this bluish texture. So the first thing that I want to also do is figure out what kind of shirt I want to make. So I've already gone ahead and decided I wanted to make a shirt for my zoo San Leon. So what we're going to do is just open up our logos. I actually have this one already preloaded. And we're going to basically start by defining the base color. So what we want to do, make a new layer and then essentially draw out a square. Then we're going to fill it with whatever we want our base texture to be. So in this case, I want to do like a light gray. So we'll just paste that in. And then as I mentioned, the base color on this particular shirt is going to be this bluish color. So we're going to actually take this gray square that I created and just work it into the blue slot right here. So as you can see, it roughly fits within the square that I've created. And you want to match it up as best you can and then it will be good. So there we go, it fits just about right, maybe a little bit more there, and then it would be good. So now, the next thing that you might wanna be defining is stuff like the trim color. So on this particular design, I don't think I wanna have custom sleeve colors. So the pink and the lime green textures, I want to also be the same color as the base pattern. So what I'm going to do is take the same green square and define it so that the pink and the lime green are going to be the exact same color. So there you go. So these two would now be the same color as the base pattern. On this particular design, we have an option for a backside pattern. I don't really want a backside pattern on this specific shirt. So in this case, this backside pattern will also be defined as a gray background. As you can see, this kind of modular square approach is really easy to just copy and paste different colors depending on what we want. So now I think it's time we define stuff like a trim color. So I do want like a like lime green trim around this shirt. So areas like the collar and the sleeves of the shirt, I want to have that lime green trim. So we need to just define their colors. So as you can see, it's red, like kind of like a camo green and cyan. So what we're gonna do is go into Photoshop, grab another square, and we could just change the color to be that one that we want, to be like lime green. And once again, we just gotta find the colors we want. So red, camo green, and cyan, and we just plug them in. So, you know, uh, red, the camo green, and cyan and there we go now we have all of our trim colors defined so now 
we can also probably add the trim to the bottom of the shirt right here, which is this black layer. So we just fill that in where it says extra one. And finally, the last thing that you might want to do is uh, define the inside of the shirt, which is going to be what I call Planet Zoo Green. So the inside of the shirt, we probably want to be a slightly darker gray than the one we have. So we're going to just plug that in and then probably define a slightly darker color. So we're just going to make it essentially just a bit darker gray. Hit OK. Great. So as you can see on this particular shirt, the purple, yellow, and tan layers are not used. So what we're going to do with them is essentially just copy our gray layer uh, just to define them to, to be just some kind of basic color. So we'll grab our gray layer and just fill in the remaining ones. So we'll just plug them in here. And last but not least, the last thing we want to do is add our logo. So on the logo layer, it's a bit bigger, but we're basically going to stretch our base color to fit the logo color, fill it in. And then last but not least, we want to fit our logo directly on there. So we want to grab our San Leon Zoo logo, copy it and paste it directly into the center of our shirt. Great. So now that we have the entire thing defined, you can see that there might be a couple of little seams or something. That's very simple. You can just make a layer and just make the whole background gray. And now we have our texture. So now from here, all we need to do is file, save as, create a PNG image, and we'll call this San Leone T-shirt. We'll make it a large file and we are good. So now if we load into game, you can go directly into your thing, hit refresh, and we can apply our new logo. So as you can see here, it's a San Leon t-shirt, select it, and we have our shirt. Now, while it looks pretty good, it looks a bit off, right? The colors don't quite match what we wanted in Photoshop. And why is this? Well, Planet Zoo has an issue registering certain photo items in from programs like Photoshop and stuff. Now, a way that a lot of people have been able to rectify this, specifically with Windows 10, is if you go into your user media folder and locate your file that you saved, so in our case it was San Leon t-shirt, if you just open it up, there should be a little option that says edit right here, and then you can save a copy of it, it'll say save a copy, and it'll generate a copy. For some reason, doing this will actually make it so that the new texture that you just saved has the correct color formatting that you actually want. So if we just reload, select another thing really quickly, and then select our shirt again, as you can see now, it actually has the correct colors that we want. So this is a weird thing. I don't know why it's the case, but it will allow you to have correct color combinations for what you want out of your shirts. So. Now that we have this, as you can see, we can hypothetically make a, you know, brand new lunchbox or a brand new balloon really, really easily. And if you designed your, uh, you know, setup in a way that would be very easy, you can kind of mass produce these. Like, for instance, we made a gray shirt. Well, what if we took all of our gray layers that we made, right? And we made it like a bluish color, right? We can do this very easily. And then we can take all of our green layers that we defined. And uh, let me just make sure that I get all of them quickly. So we can grab all of our green layers, merge all of them, and then we can make a kind of like a darker blue color, right? So if we do this, and then we have our one dark layer. So we'll define that to be like a darker blue really quickly. And then we do that. So we'll do file, save, save this and we'll call this San Leon t-shirt blue and if you want to save the step like I said we can do that uh, edit process really quickly so that we get a brand new uh, you know formatted color that is actually going to be appropriate and now if we check in game again we should have a blue version so it's very very easy to make brand new merchandise very quickly using this method and I hope you guys, you know, definitely make some custom textures yourself because this is going to be awesome for the community and we're going to get some really cool stuff out of it, I'm sure. 
As you can see, I've already made a bunch of stuff myself. I have my Lion Rider logo, I've made merch for Leaf, I've made merch for Ocean State and Dunham Park and a bunch of other uh, areas and each of these can be customized to your desire and definitely play around with it because there's some cool things that you can do. But if you've enjoyed today's video, definitely give it a like and leave a comment what you're going to be doing with your gift shops in your future parks. So thank you all for watching today's video and I will see you next time.